that's to go on to the next one. Okay. Hi. Um, as Sue says, I'm Susan Key, and I'm actually the Associate Director within NMAP, uh, NHS Education Scotland. Um, for one more day, I retire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So it's very nice to be here this afternoon um, talking about this project that I, um, I've actually put quite a lot of work into um, along with other colleagues. Um, it's, it's interesting today that um, we've had a lot of talk, particularly this morning when I was at the sessions, about transformation in midwifery and, and, and the changes that we're all undergoing because clinical supervision is obviously one of those big changes that we've all seen over the last few years. And Helene and I are going to talk a bit about how that came about in Scotland and, and the, the whole kind of philosophy and approach that we decided to take in Scotland. And we're very pleased to say that so far, our decisions that we've made um, within the wider Scottish groups have, seem to have gone down quite well with the profession. So we're going to talk a bit about that today. But having said that, one little caveat is, so far there has been no evaluation done yet of clinical supervision in Scotland, but we are in the process of doing that. There is um, um, someone, Karen Allen, who is doing a PhD, uh, and, and that, um, her PhD is the evaluation of the new approach to clinical supervision in Scotland. So I very quickly just want to say a bit about the background um, and how we got to where we're at. And then Helene's going to give you a bit more of the detail because she's been leading the rollout of the education. Um, as I'm sure, I'm not going to talk a lot about why we got to where we got to with the, the abolition, if you like, of the legislative approach to, to midwifery supervision. I'm sure you're all aware of the adverse events in midwifery that actually brought that ab about, and um, mainly the Morecambe Bay Inquiry. And of course, following that Morecambe Bay Inquiry, the King's Fund undertook a piece of work looking at midwifery supervision and their recommendation was that midwifery supervision was not a, 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 a really in a place that it should go forward in the new um, midwifery structures and that we should be looking at a different approach to midwifery supervision. The NMC um, accepted that and what we have now in the four UK countries are principles of clinical supervision that embrace an employer-led model. Um, there was a task force group set up by the NMC where all the four country um, heads of midwives, um, <coughs> sorry, lead midwives in the countries got together. They agreed some guiding principles. And then what happened was um, those, those leads came back to their own countries and, and an approach within each country was set up. And I have to say, it looks quite different across the four countries. What happened in Scotland was Anne Holmes, our chief midwife, led the task force group and she invited people to be on that group. I was invited on that group as the educationalist to look at what the education for supervision might look like going forward, based on some of the work that was coming out of the, the task force group. And one of the, some of the things that we looked at were things like, what was the evidence around supervision? What did we know worked? Um, and there's, there's quite a bit of evidence about what does and what doesn't work in clinical supervision. There's a bit of evidence around whether it should be one-to-one -one or group supervision. There's a bit of evidence around different models, different roles. So um, all of that work was pulled together and we made some decisions about what we wanted in Scotland. And basically what we decided was that we would go for a mainly group supervision type of approach in Scotland with a philosophy of a sort of coaching reflective model um, that would encourage um, midwives to really work together in a collaborative way, think about what they were doing, support each other and help to try and build some resilience within the midwifery workforce. And that's the sort of the way that we, we decided then to develop the educational resources. What Helene's going to talk about today is exactly that and, and what we did, we were asked Ness were asked to lead the educational approach to um, clinical supervision because, as you know, with any major change in any big structures um, within our professions, education is fundamental to that change being successful. So we did look at what um, we, we pulled together an educational group. And I have to say, if there's anything that I would like more that I'd like to get across in the room today is that as a leader of anything, one of the things that's probably the most important things to being successful is to have a good team working with you. 
And I have to say that probably this clinical supervision work that I, that I led at NACE has probably been one of my most successful pieces of work because I had the most fantastic team working with me. Um, we pulled together LMEs from the universities, we pulled together practice educators who had been working on the boards, running supervision sessions who really knew what was required at that kind of cold face. Um, I had my fantastic team with Ness who um, helped actually to develop the resources and to deliver them. Um, heads of midwifery were involved in it as well. So the, the group that came together to look at it was the right group and they were the right people. There wasn't one person in that group who didn't put their heart and soul into this. And I think that's why we feel that in Scotland we have a really good model going forward. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Helene now to talk about exactly what that model is and, and what it looks like. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. So Susan's the only one that's got the watch, so... All right, I'll leave it with <laughs> So, just... Oh, thank you. A wee bit about what, what we've got. Um, at the moment, we've got four online units, and unit one is for everybody who's going to undertake um, supervision. Um, and it just gives them an understanding of what the supervision sessions are going to be like so that when they arrive at supervision session that they are prepared. Then there are three, uh, unit three to four is uh, for two to four actually, um, is for um, clinical supervisors and that's initial understanding so that you knew what they were coming to, to do and what it involved because it's quite different from what we had before. So why do we need a clinical supervision model? Well, RCM did a review um, a few years ago now, but 47% uh, of midwives said that they had chronic stress. The Department of Work and Pensions also mentioned that, or said that 2.1 million days are lost to health and social care um, related to um, stress. And again, more midwives are leaving the profession, our nurses and midwives are leaving the profession, and that's related about 60% to stress-related um, problems. So if we've got all that, we need to think of how can we fix it. And if your professional quality of life is not good and you're constantly stressed, then they have a bit of compassion fatigue. Um, and what we wanted to, to do is to help with that compassion fatigue and think of what we can do. As a supervisor, um, a clinical supervisor, you can't really change a lot of the working circumstances, but what you can do is to help and change um, the culture and what's going on and how people think of things. So, one of the things is that at any one time, something like 12 million thoughts. So at the moment, there are 12 million thoughts going through your head. I don't know how I could possibly cope with that, but only about seven of them are you, are you aware of. And if those um, are um, the seven thoughts, you can see how sometimes you might only pick up on all the negative things. You know, when you're involved in something, you know, you've done a scenario or even just that wasn't particularly stressful. You always remember the bad bits, don't you? So what we want to, to help is to ensure that people um, start to think a bit more positively. So if you are exceedingly stressed, and this is quite a stress looking slide, isn't it? You might be somebody who is, is chronically stressed you might be a bit aggressive when some of your colleagues come to talk to you about something or you might shout at somebody during um, an, in uh, an instant. You might constantly be late for work. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody can't be late, do you know what I mean? But it's that person that's always late. You might find it quite difficult to make clinical decisions or good decisions because you are so stressed. You start to then have relationship issues, might be at home as well, but definitely with your colleagues, and you tend to jump to conclusions. So there's a whole load of other things that can go on, but I'm sure many of us would recognise some people or maybe even ourselves at times um, within this slide. 
So what we were hoping to do with this different model was to help build res uh, resilience. And that is where we start to reframe how we think about things. So if we've had a really bad incident, let's look at how we can refocus and rethink about it. The other thing is we have to think about the roles that we, we have. And if you're a clinical supervisor, you've also got to think about what your responsibilities are. And there was a huge change in this model in that you are no longer um, the expert or the person that will tell somebody what to do or the person will do that. What you are going to be there is to mentor somebody to help them to be empowered and to help them to make the right um, decisions. So for a minute, um, what I'd quite like you to have a wee think of is there's a whole different aspect of our life, a wheel of life, and there's things that we can have on this. And I want you to look at one aspect of this. <clears throat> And so what you do is you just mark down whether you are really happy about work, which would be a 10, or whether you're really unhappy about work, and, and that would be a 1. And I'll just give you an example from money. I know somebody who did this, and they said they were round about 3 for money. And when they then re-looked at the things for the wee exercise we're going to do in a little minute, um, they identified a whole load of things and realised they weren't short of money, they were spending their money wrongly. So have a wee think and decide where you are on that scale for work. You can all smile at me once you've decided where you are. I like somebody to smile. I like a bit of interaction. Yep. Okay, so what I want you to do now is actually think about catching your thoughts about why you are stressed at work, why you think you, or if you are stressed, or why you think you're really happy at that. So if you think a little bit about that um, for the next minute or two, what I want you then to look at is why do you think like that? What are the different aspects of work or what happens to you in work that actually makes you think that way? And then after that, have a wee thought about challenging yourself and is there anything about that that you can change? And quite often that you, you, you find that. Um, and last week when I was stressed out my box, I had to start thinking of, you know, this sort of thing and challenge myself and do that and think about what I can do to make myself feel better. So if you just have a wee thought about that for a minute, I'm not going to ask anybody to, to have a question, but it's a good way to look at that. And some of your clinical supervisors may decide to use an exercise like that as an icebreaker or an opportunity for you, you to start um, discussing with other people. But quite often, we just think everything's negative. We don't actually collect the evidence and see if it's actually accurate. You know, all we can think is of all the bad things and then do a little bit of challenging. So it's a useful exercise to have a look at. So how else can we um, deal with um, resilience? What else uh, can we do? And so there are all sorts of tips for improving resilience. And I think you'll recognise some of this. So, you know, if you are particularly stressed, not coping well at your work, you're unlikely to be able to maintain particularly positive or pers personal connection, both at home, but also in, in your work balance. And you can see, I think, sometimes the people that do that. When we talked about if you're really stressed um, and, and dealing with that, how you can, um, is that you have difficulty making uh, positive decisions. But also, again, looking in perspective, making sure that you're keeping things in perspective. And I'm not going to go through all of them because I'll not get finished. But the main thing is that you have to look after yourself. You have to think about yourself and, and, and caring for yourself. Because actually, if you don't care for yourself and you don't look to have a bit of a brighter future and you always stay in the negative, 
then all those things are kind of almost self-fulfilling. And if you can't look after yourself, you can't really look after other people with compassion. So this is the person that is not stressed. And I'm not talking about the fact that, you know, we've just had a postpartum hemorrhage and you've run down the corridor and you've had to do this, that and the next thing. This is about the chronic stress that we've been talking about. So if you're somebody that is um, not, think, not always stressed, able to see things a bit clearer, and that's what we're hoping through supervision you will, you are more likely to be an advocate for your women. You're better at communicating with everybody else. You're emotionally intelligent and you know when it's you that's not been as rational um, as you can be because we all have that. And then therefore you're able to help and make changes. And so we're hoping clinical su supervision will help with some of that. So we've had a number of uh, midwives um, come on the clinical supervision. To date, Scotland's a lot smaller. So at the moment, we have 157 um, clinical supervisors um, in midwifery. Um, and these are the things that they saw that, that clinical supervision would help with, that it would be nurturing, it would be valued, and it would help people to embrace change. And I think it's particularly important when we are thinking about that over the next uh, few years while we are working through Best Start, that we do um, embrace change and that we do um, work together. And hopefully that will, that will help us. Um, but that's the benefits um, that you can see. So models, there are a number of models of um, supervision with, um, contained within the four units. And um, the important thing for you is to look at is that there's a reflective um, component. Um, it's focusing on our team dynamics, communication and personal coping, but also about our own professional development. And ultimately, all of it is for improving patient treatment. And there's a word that has nothing at the end, but it's improving patient treatment and safety should be there. So. A clinical supervisor facilitator is not there to make your choices. It's there to help you to have the opportunity to choose yourself. So a clinical supervisor has a number of tools to use and you can see them all in the different units. And they're basically all the same, getting us to have an opportunity to look at ourselves, work through things, work through incidents that we might have been involved in, or work through any changes that we're going to be making in our maternity services and allow us to not always think negatively, but to work through um, the things. This does not mean that everything's always going to be positive. We know that, but we do need to reframe a bit about what we are thinking. So this is the model that most of the clinical supervisors will use. Um, and what they're hoping to do through this is having a contract with midwives coming to, to that, where you have a chance to chat, to talk, not to have a moaning session, but to be there. The supervisor is there to challenge you, to make sure that you don't have unrealistic beliefs, to challenge the negative beliefs that we might have, but to support midwives to solve their own problems to develop those negotiation and assertiveness skills that you all have. It's about making everybody, the, giving them all the opportunity to be leaders, to help us to deal with any strong feelings when we've had a particular incident and to improve um, any of the coping mechanisms and to make good decisions and help us to make a plan. And so the supervision se session will go through a number of phases. And actually, you should hardly hear the clinical supervisor say very much. The session should be led by the midwives that are there. The supervisor might help, might guide, might prompt, might stop and say, mm, let's have a wee um, stop and let's think about what we're chatting about. So somebody described it as a chance to chat in the coffee room where everything is kind of done reasonably confidentially. And hopefully, 
that makes a bit of a noise when you scratch your nose. Um, hopefully, um, it's an extension of that, an extension. And there should be um, ground rules about the confidentiality um, and things shouldn't be talked a bit about out with um, the session unless the group of supervisees that have been there agree to discuss it. Um, so I've said that already. So these are um, the a selection of um, the supervisors of midwives. Some are further down the road than others. It's early days of clinical supervision in Scotland. There's about to be some um, CPD sessions coming up soon. But I would encourage you, if you haven't attended a clinical supervision session, to uh, go online, do the unit, and uh, then attend a clinical supervision session and make it your own. Make it about what you're doing and about what is stressing you within your, your teams. So how has the training gone? Well, at the moment, I can only give you evaluation from uh, the units and from the, the training, as mentioned, um, the whole model is being looked at and will take a couple of years before we've got lots of results. But the evaluation of the units um, it rated very high, so one being um, poor and four being high. So you can see that people found them engaging. People realised that it was a completely different model. It wasn't about blame. So no longer will supervisors or uh, clinical supervisors be attending, um, you know, clinical incident reviews as a supervisor. They might be there as a leader in another capacity, but they're not there from that sort of element. So it's completely different and taking that away. For those of the facilitators that came along to be um, clinical supervisors, 99% related uh, thought that the clinical supervision um, sessions, or not sessions, um, training, which was two days, was um, very good with 1% satisfactory. Um, the 1% was in the first course we ran, so uh, uh, we definitely got uh, better. And how has some of the sessions goes? I say it's varied dependent on where you are. So this is some feedback here from um, Supervision in Orkney. And um, they had a couple of great sessions. A lot of that was done by VC, in fact. And um, these are tools that some of you have come to the NHS education stand. See, there's some tools there for um, clinical um, supervisors. Uh, but mainly people have found the sessions valuable. Um, a lot of people thought that it would be just a reiteration of the old model and have been quite impressed that it's, it is very, very different. So I got my one minute warning, so I'm glad to say I've completed that. 